the University of California has developed a mechanical tomato harvester as the tractor moves through the farm field the has for the har- harvester picks the tomato from the plant and sorts the tomatoes by size they have had to develop tomatoes with harder skins so that the machine could work properly so this is a good example of interdependent technologies the cause the result is that costs are reduced by between five to seven dollars per ton which become a great deal of money when you are harvesting large amounts of tomato we might argue that the mechanical tomato harvester is political because it reduces the need for farm workers indeed that thousands of jobs were lost due to the introduction of this machine but the politics of machine this machine go deeper because its machine costs more than 50,000 US dollar uh, each that's fine if you are a large farm farmer a large farm and uh, on and run but by corporation 50 grand is not much money but if you are small family farmer you will have trouble finding the money to buy such machinery the result has been that these harvester have slowly led to the elimination of smaller farms from the 60s to 73 the number of tomato growers in california dropped from 4000 to 600 This was a technology that created a new power relationship. It favored the large corporate farmer. So we 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 asked the designer of the machine at the University of California. They would say that they didn't they didn't mean to make small farmer being driven out of the business. They didn't plan anything of, of the sorts. So it would appear that this was an unintended political technology. Yet, if we look at who funds agricultural research at the university, and we look at the who the research benefits, we see a relationship between the large agricultural companies and university research. They are the one who are the most powerful in the farming community. They have a strong voice in government. They give a lot of lots of money for university research. Should we be surprised when university research design the technology that distinctly favors them? No. So it is unintended, but it is indeed right. Now we move to the questions. The next question: Are there technologies that are inherently political? Ah. Uh, So we define them as technologies that regardless of the context these technologies are always political and or always associated with a specific political arrangement. So we look at the characteristic of technology In characterizing political technology, we might want to ask these questions. Does a particular technology promote centralization or decentralization? Does it promote egalitarian or inegalitarian? Is it repressive or liberating? Is it authoritarian or democratic? Centralization describe a condition in which power is held by central or single person or group. Egalitarian describes a condition it, in which all power is held equally among person. Repressive describes a situation in which rights, freedoms, and liberties are eliminated. Authoritarian like centralization describes the holding of power by a single entity if we find that the technology always promotes certain characteristic then we would say that such a technology is inherently political 
a classic example a classic example of a technology that is at best at the very least associated with authoritarian decision making is the ship it is very not unauthoritarian it is democratic it is we in fact we might say that the ship yes it's it, it requires a hierarchical control structure but it's not it needs some people to work together right so it is not it is not that one person could actually really do everything it is very hierarchical but it is also need many people to work together it's very different if compared to nuclear technology that uh, promotes centralization There are two considerations in this respect. First, nuclear power plants are most efficient when they are very large. They just provide energy to a large area or, or number of people. In such a system, the communities that fall within the range of that the nuclear power plant usually must participate in using the plant's electricity. Thus, providing the energy it itself is a centralized activity. There is another way in which nuclear power can promote not only centralization but also limit personal liberties. Uh, typically, nuclear power plants require extreme security measures. The chance that some of the fuel might be stolen increases as we use more and more nuclear power. The, fu the fuel from nuclear reactors, especially the fuel waste product can be used to assemble nuclear weapon. Just a small amount is sufficient to cause large destruction. So should some fuel go missing we would end up looking everywhere, searching through homes, stopping cars, in short removing personal liberties in at in an attempts to stop a nuclear disaster. We might want to contrast nuclear power with solar power. Not only do you not need a large security apparatus for solar power, it is also decentralized. There is no need for people to hook up to an electrical system which is run power solar power. Since it, it, each person could purchase and use their own solar panels. So everyone decide for him or herself the manner in which they will generate electrical energy. Nuclear weapons also provide another example of highly centralized system. No country had nuclear weapons permits its citizens to freely own and use nuclear weapons. Uh, so here we say we see that there are some technologies that are always political, inherently political, and there are some technology that are usually asso associated with particular arrangement. Uh, that is the end of the, 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 the lecture today. So we see that the process of building, designing, innovating the, po the technology are crucial because politics are built to such process.